Hello everyone, I am Kyle Vivares from Your Daily Nerd, and this is your weekly news. Uh, we have a lot of great stories to talk about this week, so we're going to just go ahead and just jump right into it. First thing we need to talk about is 2K has announced that there have been some major layoffs at Hangar 13. Uh, you would most likely know Hangar 13 as the developer of uh, Mafia 3. Uh, in a statement, 2K said... Uh, 2K can confirm that there have been staff reductions at Hangar 13 in order to ensure that the studio's resources are properly aligned with its long-term development plans. These reductions will not influence 2K's abilities to create and deliver its products that are currently in development. We never take these matters lightly and are working with the affected employees to support them and explore potential opportunities throughout our organization. Obviously, this is very sad news, and our uh, thoughts and good vibes are out there with all the people who have lost their job from Hangar 13. There's been no confirmation as to how many people are out of jobs, but it's just been reported that a large portion of the staff has been let go. So, hoping that everybody from Hangar 13 who has been laid off uh, gets back on their feet soon and is able to find new and steady jobs. Next up for some news from uh, the new game that's really sweeping the nation right now, Monster Hunter World. Uh, it's been a big success, and uh, because of it, uh, Capcom president uh, Haruhiro Sujimoto has been giving getting lots of requests asking if the game will be coming to Switch. Uh, recently, he was in an interview, and he was asked if it would ever be possibly coming to the Switch. This is what he had to say. Taking into account various conditions, bringing Monster Hunter World now for release is difficult. The reason is that the Switch has very different functions from other stationary consoles, as well as different players. Each game console has its own characteristic, and it's necessary that we, as game makers, adapt to that when making a game. From now on, we're looking at how we can support the Switch with our games, and that also includes Monster Hunter. Now, that sounds like pretty good news. Um, from what I kind of am gathering from other news sources, I guess, game journalists, is that not a lot of people are super, super bummed out that Monster Hunter World is, is not coming to the Switch. Uh, granted, probably a lot of these people have also been playing the game on the consoles that already exist, so you put a lot of progress into a Hunter on Monster Hunter, so it, it makes sense that you wouldn't want to necessarily start all the way over, even on the new console. This brought up a really good conversation, I think, that needs to be necessarily be had that I was thinking about. Does every successful and popular game need to come to the Switch? Obviously, it's 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 nice with games that are were successful on the Wii U that not a lot of people got to play, to, for them to come to the Switch, but do, does every single game necessarily need to come to the Switch that comes to the Xbox One and PS4? Uh, obviously, we're getting the Dark Souls remaster that was confirmed in the recent Nintendo Direct, and that sounds like a, like a good use of that, but lo, we've been looking at, we've had Doom, we've had Wolfenstein 2 that's coming out soon. Obviously, it's coming out far later than the uh, ones for Xbox One and PS4 are coming out. I guess the real question then becomes... Does every game need to have a Switch port? Is every game better for having a Switch port? Uh, and that's a question I want to pass on to all of y'all. Does every game need to have a Switch port? And if so, which ones do you want to see? Let me know in the comments below. And now for some news about everybody's favorite topic, loot boxes. Apparently some legislation has been proposed in Hawaii to limit the sale of games with loot boxes. Uh, two of the bills, if they're passed, will stop the sale of games in which players under the age of 21 can use real money to buy randomized rewards. Um, but apparently with this, there's not really a way that has been proposed so far that they would be able to actually regulate that. The other set of bills uh, would see games with purchasable loot boxes or other random rewards feature labels to disclose that they have those loot, those loot boxes in them, as well as display the probability rates for those prizes. Now, I think the first, I think the first thing that needs to be said about this is that I don't like the idea of government having to come in here and help regulate with video games. I think, as a whole, the game industry does a good job of regulating itself, and that way we don't really need bills to help 
with that. I think we do a pretty good job of that. That's why we have the ESRB and in the first place. Now, this first set of bills, the ones that stop sales of games in which players under the age of 21 can use real money to buy randomized rewards, I feel like that's a bit ridiculous. 21 is older than what you would need to be to purchase an M-rated game. So you'd be able to purchase an M-rated game with all the guts, glor- the guts and the gore and sex and all that, but you couldn't. it doesn't seem like you'd be able to purchase a game in which you'd be able to buy loot boxes. Now maybe I'm misinterpreting this and it just says that, and maybe that just means that you wouldn't, if you're under 21, you wouldn't be able to get the loot boxes in-game. I still think that's a bit ridiculous. I think it's a, just a stretch too far, and I think it's just an example of something that's just not needed in this industry. Obviously, we've seen uh, EA with Star Wars Battlefront 2 when they're overreaching loot boxes. I, I, again, I say I feel like the market is doing a good job of regulating itself. EA didn't meet their sales projections. I don't think that we need to, that anybody needs to come in here and be like, oh, well, y'all don't know how to h- handle yourself. Obviously we do because that giant protest was going on. Gamers are more self-aware than I think uh, people are giving them credit for, and I think it's the responsibility of parents to be cautious and to watch exactly what it is that their kids are buying and purchasing and know that these things are in the game. And that leads me to my second point about the second set of bills. I'm all for this, set, this second set of things. I think this, this should be something that we implement I, regardless, I don't think that uh, we need necessarily need to have um, a set of bills in place that will force that to happen. But I think the ESRB would do would be wise to implement something that would uh, let people know, hey, there are loot boxes or microtransactions in this game, and that you should be able, they should have to display what the probability rates of receiving certain items is. I know that that is the case in uh, Chinese gaming. That That's actually the law where everybody does have to actually provide what the probability is of receiving certain items in these loot boxes. And I think that would be a good practice that would be well received worldwide. And I, I think that's really all that I have to say about this story and about loot boxes for this week because obviously loot box story is always evolving and will always it's going to be prevalent here for probably the next year or so after the debacle that was Battlefront 2. So I guess I, I want to pass the question on to you as to what do you think is too much as far as loot box regulation? Uh, do these bills make sense or would or would you rather just see nothing happen and just be like hey we, we've got this we don't need people telling us what to do uh let me know down in the comments below next up in some honestly some pretty bizarre news valve has announced that they are removing all games from incel games off of steam for planting positive reviews Uh, In a quote from Valve release manager Jason Royman, he said, The publisher appears to have used multiple Steam accounts to post positive reviews for their own games. This is a clear violation of our review policy and something we take very seriously. Uh, There have been other parts of this story that have come up about uh, supposedly a leak leaked email from the CEO of Incel Games telling people, threatening people with their jobs if they don't purchase and leave positive reviews for the games. Um, Incel Games has put out a, a statement after the fact and said, hey, I am like basically just being, I'm so sorry, this is not, I didn't mean for this to happen, this is not what I meant, and I don't know. It's a very, very weird story. Um, I'm just glad to see, like, in a way, this is cheating. This is, it's, it's kind of what we've, say, we've said a lot on this channel. Don't fucking cheat. Don't cheat at video games. In a way, this is cheating at video games. Don't cheat the market and tell people. It's false advertising, right? By having like all these people be like, oh, it's the greatest game I've ever played and leaving positive reviews for game. It, in a way, it's, it's false advertising. It's cheating. So, again, if you can take any lesson from this story and other things in the past, don't fucking cheat. Just don't cheat. It's not hard. Games are supposed to be fun. Don't, don't ruin the fun for other people. Come on. Next up in some serious rumor territory. Again, rumor. This is a rumor. Before like before I say anything else about the details of this story, 
all speculative and all rumors right now at this current point in time. But apparently Lucasfilm and Disney has not been happy with EA with their handling of their property and are supposedly shopping around at Activision and Ubisoft for possible new Star Wars IPs. Um, this comes from a couple of like just unnamed sources and um, it makes sense though, doesn't it? Because of the fact that uh, EA has not necessarily been very great with their with the Star Wars property. They uh, first of all, there's the huge Star Wars Battlefront two debacle that happened in November, which that did not look good. Like not only was that not they didn't meet their sales expectations for the game, they also were hit with a bunch of bad press, which nobody wants. So that's that's not good. Also, they shut down Visceral Games, which was working on another Star Wars property. So it doesn't seem like EA knows exactly what they are doing with the Star Wars IP. So it makes sense that Lucasfilm and Disney would be shopping around at Activision and Ubisoft. Um, apparently, they have an exclusive contract with EA, but there's talk that there's probably an addendum in the contract that would basically let e well, that would let them pull out of the deal if there is mismanagement of their of their terms of their property etc cetera, etc cetera. so i'm not sure what to think of this i think it's all kind of it's still very speculative at this point um i think it makes sense that lucasfilm and disney would do this uh but i don't necessarily know if it's 100 percent accurate but yeah that's that's really all there is to say about it at this point it's it's a rumor and just keep it under your hat and kind of think about it for a little bit. Would you want to see a Star Wars game from Activision or Ubisoft? I don't think that they're necessarily the worst options out there. And last but not least, we're going to be talking about probably one of the bigger stories from this past week is the EVO 2018 lineup. Uh, EVO, if you don't know, is an annual fighting game tournament series where they choose a few of the most popular fighting games in the, commun in the fighting game community and have tournaments for those for different prizes. Um, this year's lineup includes uh, Tekken 7, Smash Brothers for Wii U, Street Fighter V Arcade Edition, Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle, Guilty Gear XRD Rev 2, Injustice 2, Smash Brothers Melee, and Dragon Ball Fighters. Probably the biggest story that about this is the noticeable absence of Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Now, obviously, we know that that game was not necessarily, it wasn't well-received, but it wasn't, like, hated, but the graphics were not as good as they should have been. There was a noticeable lack of Marvel characters because of the fact that uh, they didn't belong to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, uh, i.e. there were no X-Men in the game, which, if you're making a Marvel vs. Capcom game, you, you better have the X-Men in it. That's, that they are a staple of the fighting game series. How are you going to have a Marvel vs. Capcom game without Wolverine? I, I digress. Um, the game it was fine. Not a lot. Like It wasn't like... Most people liked it more than they expected to, but that game had a sharp fall-off after Dragon Ball Fighters came out. And I don't blame them. It seems like Dragon Ball Fighters is a well, more well-put-together game, and it makes sense that that Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite is not on here. Well, that's it for this week's weekly news. Um, a little bit of housekeeping before we go. Please make sure that you are checking out all of the videos that we have here to offer on Your Daily Nerd. Uh, we had our first episode of the podcast go up this past Monday. Obviously, we had last week's weekly news. And also, last week, I had a video that I put out about the um, death of single-player games. Uh, please go check those out. It would really mean the world to everybody here at Your Daily Nerd. Also, please like, comment, subscribe, uh, recommend us to your friends, please. We're trying to get as much of a following here as we can. It'd be so awesome to be able to build up a small community here. Let us know what you want to see here on Your Daily Nerd. Like we said, this is your Daily Nerd, and we want to do things that help you nerd out and make you have a good day. Things that like that you like, pop culture, video games, TV, whatever it is, we want to help you nerd out. So let us know what exactly you want to see. Do you want to see us play specific games? Do you want to see us give our opinions about movies, TV shows, anything, really? We are here to be your daily nerd. So 
let us know in the comments on any of our videos and we'll respond as soon as we can and yeah that'd be fantastic also don't forget to uh follow us on our uh social media you can go like our facebook page uh follow us on twitter at yd nerd and follow us on instagram at yd nerd it'd be really great to see all of y'all's bright and shiny faces until then this has been your weekly news i'm kyle Bavaris. have a good day